frankly one of my unsettled feelings as I pondered that question is uh, that given my own history, which is three years of seminary, 30 years of pastoring, and now another three years of seminary dean, how in the world do you answer that? There's, there's too many answers. So part of what I have to wrestle with is for, for a brief uh, thinking uh, about it, what to focus on. And what I came up with was you know, any number of the things we would classically think of as, uh, what was the question again, what is a good pastor, or what, the quality. what qualities <laughs> the are needed in a pastor. A lot of the biblical uh, comments on grace, peace, love, charity, long-suffering, many of those things apply to pastors as well. But what is uniquely important for a good pastor? And uh, a kind of set of interrelated things that struck me um, were that it really matters how the pastor is human being relates to the role of pastor. They're, in my mind, totally interrelated, but different things. And um, I think it's really important for a pastor to be a human being, and for a pastor to understand that the role of pastor is more than just being yourself. So how do you do that? Uh, I have seen students here, love them, but I've seen students who are early in their career preach and suddenly the the lovely human being that I know as that person full of joys and pains and tears and laughter gets in the pulpit and I have no idea who that person is I've never met this person before because the student has become I think and I did this too as a, as a trainee a, a role rather than a human being who's also learning how to integrate role with person or I've seen the other side uh, and this was more my struggle when I was younger, and probably sometimes still today, that we are so uncomfortable with role that we are uh, focused on being ourselves regardless of whether that fits the moment. So, for example, when you go into a hospital room and somebody's dying, uh, which I have experienced, the person is not just looking for you to be yourself. They're looking for some, and often family, are looking for something more than you yourself. They're looking for you as, in some way, a representative of uh, the beloved community of God and, and in many ways of God and God's Spirit uh, being offered in that room. So, mm. holding those together, I, I think, is really key. Mm. And pastors who can do that well, who can be human in the role, and who can be comfortable with the role as uh, human beings, uh, I think uh, that's really what I would highlight. Uh, mm -hmm. I would, I would think along the same lines, which is what your question implies, if, if we need pastors who are able to be both human and comfortable with being pastors, then how do we help congregations honor that and call that forth? And um, let me start with an example of where I saw it both happen and not quite happen. Uh, in my most recent congregation, I was a pastor at a congregation, a small congregation in eastern Pennsylvania. And it, it was a great congregation for helping me learn the role because I'd been pastor in multiple settings before. My first intensive experience as a pastor was in an urban congregation of younger people who were really very uncomfortable with role themselves. And so if I put on role, they weren't comfortable with it. They didn't really want me to be their pastor. They, they were tempted for me to be their friend, so I didn't really get a chance to fully experience the power of a congregation that wanted me as a pastor in, in some of the role-related ways until I got to this um, semi-rural congregation uh, in the 90s. In that setting, I began to experience the power of when people want you to visit in the hospital, for example, because they are under life and death uh, pressures. And they honor and cherish that what you bring is something bigger than just your own humanity. That helped me learn the gift of, of honoring that role and sharing that role with the congregation. But I also remember a member of that congregation who I loved. And he and I uh, prayed often together and, and came to love each other. Uh, but when I was going on sabbatical in um, 2003, after four years of really feeling like the role had become pretty heavy, 
one of the things I told the congregation was that I wanted to spend the four months of my sabbatical taking off the mantle, the role of pastor. And we can theologize about whether I was right or wrong, but my take on this was, no, I need to take it off. And this congregational member's uh, take on it was, you can never take it off, you're ordained for life. So don't be telling us that you're going to go on sabbatical and take off your role. You're always a pastor, you're an ordained minister, and that's who you are. To me, that was a confusion of my humanity and my role that, um, that I, didn't, I didn't roll with. I, I did go on sabbatical with a sense that I had the gift of giving my family the Michael that they were often not getting enough of because I was often in pastoral role and didn't have enough time to be with them sometimes until sabbatical. So I, I think that's an example of the congregations can struggle with how to both honor and value uh, the mantle of pastor that they empower their pastor to carry, and how they can sometimes uh, make the person really struggle to maintain the, the needs of a human being and, and to uh, have a sustainable life within the role.